Welcome back, this is Goku Sun DBC, and welcome back for part 5 of a 6 part special series that is Top 5 Fighters. And of course, first time was 99 to 94, 95 to 99, 2000 2004, 2005 to 2009, this time 2010 to 2014. These are my top 5 favorite fine games. Specifically of these five years. First some honorable mentions and one dishonorable mention. First up, enjoy the music in the background. Ground Zero Funk from, of course, Tekken 5. So with that said, first honorable mentions. And that is the uh, reboot of Mortal Kombat. Gets the first honorable mention, also known as MK9. Then we have Kena Fighters 13, which I personally really haven't played much of 13, which is why it just gets honorable mention. But what I have played, I did enjoy. And the last honorable mention goes to Tekken Tag Tournament 2. And the one dishonorable mention, Soul Calibur 6, or sorry, not Soul Calibur 6, what am I saying? Soul Calibur 5. Easily the worst in the franchise. It is about the only Soul Calibur game I genuinely I'm just not the biggest fan of. Outside of the design of Nightmare. And a few pieces of music and stuff, and that's about it, unfortunately. Coming in at number five is actually coming in at number five was released in 2012. And it was the first version of this game, which I have come to really enjoy. It's easily in my top, like, two favorite anime fighters of all time. Um, coming in number five is Undernight in Birth. So, obviously, this is the PS3 version that I'm talking about. I really love the PS3 version. It was definitely a good debut. I was lucky because it was a PS Plus game one month and got it for free. Now, if you yourself are curious about playing like the original, for instance, on PS3, it's pretty cheap. You can easily get for under $10, no problem. But I highly recommend playing Under Dying Birth. It's a great art system works fighter. Coming in at number four is a tie. Um, first of the two games in a tie is released in 2010, and that being Street Fighter 4. Arcade Edition is tied for number 4 spot. Now, Arcade Edition of Super Street Fighter 4 is pretty much my personal favorite version of Street Fighter 4, though there's obviously more content Ultra, but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, tied with it at number 4, released in 2012, in my opinion, genuinely one of the most underrated fighting games, definitely of the modern era of fighting games. Tied at number four for me personally is Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Love the game. And I always will enjoy it. I still play it on and off. I mean, I love the fact that it is a really good fighter and it plays actually very solid on the Vita. Coming in at number three is another tie. Um, coming in at number three in a two way tie is. First released in 2013, that being Dead or Alive 5 is tied for third. I enjoyed Dead or Alive 5 a lot more than I think quite a few people did. But there are fighting games I genuinely do tend to enjoy more than most people. Um, count net, tied with it, uh, released in 2012, is the original Injustice Gods Among Us. Great fighter, and I love it. And I'll admit I'm a little biased because I love Nightwing and the fact that Nightwing is a character in the game definitely increases, not to mention its superb story mode. I love that game. I still on occasion will go back and replay the story mode. It's that enjoyable. I'm the same way with Mortal Kombat X as well. I love the story mode in MKX as well. And General Netherrealm does a really good job in their stories. Coming in at number two, 
this was hard to put at number two. I want to put it number one, but it's definitely back and forth between my favorite game of a specific franchise and the, in my opinion, the best fighting game of the eighth generation of game consoles. Uh, coming at number two, released in 2013, originally the base vanilla version, um, but has gone to become a superb game. Coming at number two is Killer Instinct, which is easily, as I just said, in my opinion, the best fighting game of the eighth console generation, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, coming at number one, released in 2011, it is my favorite version of the crossover games from Capcom. Coming in at number one is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is my favorite of the Marvel vs. Capcom series in general. It, it honestly, in my opinion, is a way better game than Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I get a lot of people are blinded by the nostalgia factor. I admit, I love Marvel vs. Capcom 2, though I personally prefer... Capcom vs. SNK 2 over MVC 2, but everyone has their own taste. I think, though, the game is better well balanced in Marvel 3. I just like that, the fact that characters are better well balanced in the game versus 2, definitely unbalanced. And also, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 will always hold a special place for me. And I think it does have one of the better bosses in the game series, Galactus. I thought, honestly, was a great final boss, in my opinion. Is he my favorite? No, I, in fact, actually like... Um, from MVCI, personally, of bosses, my favorite boss is probably, honestly, Ultron Sigma, for me personally. But yeah, great game. I mean, Deadpool is fun as heck in Ultimate Ball vs. Capcom 3. But anyways, that is my top five favorite fine games from 2010 to 2014. Uh, still a little early in the morning, you'll have to forgive me. But also, next week will be the final one in this series. And of course, that being top five fine games 2015 to 2019. And I'll see y'all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. Stay safe out there. And stay tuned for a upcoming movie review in the next week I have coming. Since it's getting close to Halloween, uh, the first movie review will be up the next week. And that is my review for the, of course, first live-action Resident Evil movie. About a week or so after... I will also then be uploading my review for the original Silent Hill film. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel.